All right, hey guys, thanks for jumping on. About to get started here in Indianapolis. Yeah, Indianapolis, right? <laughs> Been to so many cities, I don't know where I'm at. Let's have some fun. Man, well, thank you guys for coming. I'm so excited. I'm expectant tonight for what God's going to do. You know, if you have been keeping up, then you've seen some of the things that have happened. If you have not been keeping up so much, we've seen a deaf boy healed. We've seen um, several people that were paralyzed healed. Re received feeling back in their body. Received movement back in their body. We have seen people delivered of years and years of addiction, depression, anxiety. And we've seen just the the zeal of the Lord come upon everyone that was in attendance. And really, God has just set our hearts on fire and reminded us like what it means to be a Christian and why we're alive, like why we're waking up in the morning. And so that is why I'm here. You know, if we want to see a revival, I think that's epic. That's what I want. And if we want to rock our city, we have to make sure that we're not getting rocked by life, right? Like we have to be able to be the ones that are bringing revival Instead of needing to get revived all the time, we could just walk in the presence of the Lord at all times. So I have a word, I think, that's going to challenge and encourage us. And then we're going to pray for the, the sick and anyone who has any needs. And we'll pray for the city and that'll be that. So thank you guys for coming. It's funny, only like one person's actually from the area, kind of. Everyone else drove hours to get here. It's amazing. Hey to everyone online. I just want to apologize to all of you who watch online for 27 cities now. I have not acknowledged you guys at all. I just turned the camera on and go. So I'm going to try to acknowledge you guys who are watching as well. Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Let's pray and we're going to go after it. So Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the chance to meet right now. Thank you that it's such a beautiful day and we can meet out in the open without any fear of harm or any type of persecution or arrest. God, what a privilege it is. And I pray, Lord, that today you would speak through me, speak to all of us, remind us why we're alive. Remind us why you sent your son Jesus and what it means now that he came. I pray, God, that every heart would just receive tonight. I pray that every single mind would be open to hear your words. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, I was, re I was praying today with my wife, and I was praying by myself. She's in Texas, so we pray over FaceTime. And I was just stirred to get into Colossians 1. And so I want to read a little bit of Colossians 1, and I want to preach out of that, because I believe that it's going to speak to us today. This is what Colossians 1 said. I want to start... In chapter 9, in chapter 1, verse 9. You know, I first want to say this. For the most part, many people that I'm running into across the country, we've been all the way from the upper left USA down and across, and we're working our way east. Most people that I encounter and most people that I encounter online have experienced a Christianity that was about praying a prayer so that you could get saved from hell. Is anyone else familiar with that kind of belief system yeah it was about praying a prayer to not go to hell and so that jesus would save you forgive you of all your sins so you could go to heaven did it see is it fair to say that heaven seemed like the goal that we were saved unto heaven is that fair to say for most people yeah a lot of people here nodding their heads a lot of people online are responding as well the gospel at large to me has felt like it was about getting saved unto heaven but then what? What happens after we pray this prayer? What happens after we pray the sinner's prayer, pray the prayer of salvation, and now we're still going through life and we have a ton of questions and all we're told is read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible, pray. You're supposed to be praying. But we're not being told why. We're not actually being told what it's unto, what we were saved unto, what it means to be a Christian and the result of that is a lot of people falling away from the faith. It's not people that are walking away from the faith in anger or people that are walking away saying, I don't believe anymore in a moment. 
It's happening over time. It's happening because discouragement sets in because the one who brings discouragement and confusion, the enemy, is at work. And what happens is when you pray a prayer just to go to heaven, you're still living sometimes in hell on earth. And if you haven't been told why you've been saved, then you don't have any power to overcome your circumstances. And all of a sudden, your circumstances are overcoming you. And so you pray like you're told to, and maybe you're reading this Bible. It doesn't make much sense because you haven't caught a revelation because you don't know why you're saved. And your prayers are mostly needs-driven, and sometimes they're out of a place of pride where my life needs to get fixed. God, please come in and zap some things around so that I can have a better day. I'll tell you that God is not interested in enabling pride. God doesn't want to answer a prayer that's just going to further enable you to continue looking at life as though it's about you. And I want to apologize in advance. You guys are facing the sun. (laughs) Oh, Lord. And so what happens is over time, we begin to get discouraged because life isn't going the way we thought it would. And the pastor that told us to pray that prayer made it sound like Christianity was going to be a lot of fun. It was going to be about blessing and provision and protection and God always being there for you. And He is, but we don't understand what that actually means. And as a result, the parable that Jesus gave has come true for many people that I've met. Where we've received the Word of God with joy in our hearts. And we go about our lives and then the issues of life come in and squeeze out every bit of faith and hope that we had in whatever belief we had. The issues of life come in. Jesus also said that the the deceitfulness of riches can come in. Sometimes I see Christians that get distracted by worldly possessions, worldly goals, worldly desires, and those things begin to take the place of the throne on their heart. And the pursuit of those things squeezes out every bit of faith because now it's not God first, it's me first. I want us to understand why we're alive because if we do, I believe that tonight we're going to catch a revelation. We're going to catch an understanding. Even the younger ones here, you guys are going to understand what it means that Jesus came and He paid the price for you. And we're going to burn for Him like we never have before. Does that sound like something we all want? Yeah, that's what we want, man. We want above everything else, above all the money, above all the healing, above everything, I want to know why I'm alive each day. Because I can get healed in my body and blessed with money and given all of these things and promoted and known around the world, but if I don't have peace in my heart and a zeal for the Lord, that stuff's going to fade away and what am I left with? So let's get revelation of something that never fades away. Colossians 1. Man, I'm excited. This is Paul talking. He's writing to some people and he says this. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will, of God's will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work. That's so interesting to me. He says that His desire for these people is that they would be filled with the knowledge of the will of God. I've heard people tell me, you can't know God's will. You can't know God's will. He's God. Everything's just up to Him and we're just along for the ride. I believe that God sent His Son for a greater purpose than for us to just be unaware of what he's doing the bible says to not be unaware of the devices of the enemy why would we be unaware of what our own god is doing we must know the will of god and paul is saying my desire is that you would be filled with the knowledge of the will of god in all wisdom say all wisdom not just some wisdom all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the lord Now, we might want to walk worthy of the Lord. We might like the idea of walking worthy to the Lord. That's the Christian life, right? Living for God. 
That's what I was told when I was growing up. But you see, I was saved because they pointed to the cross and said, your sin put Jesus there. And if you don't receive him as your savior, you're going to go to hell when you die. You need to pray this prayer. And so what happens is I began to read this book out of religious obligation. Some interest, I won't lie, I was interested. You know, I was a Christian, I thought. I went to church every Sunday. I went to all the Bible studies. I went to youth camps. I went to youth groups. I played on the worship team at a mega church of thousands of people. And the first weekend I was at college invited to a drinking party, I said yes, right away. Now, does that sound like someone who's walking worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him and being fruitful in every good work? No, it's not. Now, I knew that. I knew that it wasn't pleasing to God, but to be honest, I didn't actually care. I cared about going to a party because it sounded like a lot of fun. I cared about drinking because it sounded like a lot of fun. I cared about being around a lot of girls because it sounded like a lot of fun. I'm just being honest. But I called myself a Christian. In fact, if you would have said, why are you going to that party? You're a Christian, man. I would have said, don't judge me, man. I'm a Christian. I love God. I'm just, what? I'm going to a party. Look at these guys. They're all Christians. They're going to a party. I began to compare myself among myself. How many of you know none of those people are sitting on God's throne? How many of you know none of those people are going to be there on that day when I'm standing before him? And how many of you know it wouldn't matter if they were, they're not the ones who have any input on that day. But you see, I began to compare myself among myself and this became my Christianity instead of this. This became how I judged my life instead of this. I was not walking worthy of the Lord, but I would have told you that I loved him. Interesting. He continues on, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. That's a pretty intense prayer if we only pray to prayer to go to heaven. That's a pretty intense, that's a pretty specific prayer. He's asking for us to have knowledge and wisdom of the will of God. He's asking for us to be fruitful in everything we do. He's asking for us to increase in our knowledge. He's asking for us to be strengthened in all of our might and to have patience and long suffering. I didn't have any of that stuff. If someone cut me off in traffic, man, I'd let you know about it. If someone wronged me when I was out with my friends, I would have got in their face. I would give people a piece of my mind, but hey, praise God, bless God. I prayed a prayer to go to heaven. I'm working on it, man. I'm in a process. I go to church. That's what I thought Christianity was about. We're going to find out what Christianity is about in here. He goes on to say this, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. What does that mean? Giving thanks to God who has made us able to share in the inheritance of all of the saints in the light of Jesus Christ. That's kind of huge. That sounds a little bit like the gospel is about more than just being transported somewhere after I die. Verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of Jesus Christ in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Wow, he pulled us out of darkness and put us into light. Now this might seem redundant, this might seem repetitive, you might be like, yeah, I've heard all this before. I didn't hear this stuff. I heard pray a prayer so that you don't go to hell, do your best, here's the Bible, learn what it says, 10 commandments, God sent Jesus to, like, transform us. Just wait, it gets better. I'm skipping down here to verse 19 through 23, and then we're going to really start doing some preaching. I'm doing some teaching right now. Verse 19, For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell. 
and by him, by Jesus, to reconcile all things to God through him, to make everything right that was wrong through him, whether things on the earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of Jesus Christ. Here we go. This is where it gets really good. This is the gospel right here. Colossians 1.21 And you who were once alienated, that means cut off and separated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled, he has made right in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, blameless, and righteous in the sight of God. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard. Wow. Now what does all of that mean? Because that was kind of a lot. I like to use scripture when I'm preaching. The Bible literally says that we were enemies of God. We had no peace. And yet He reconciled us to Himself. He made us right with Him through Jesus Christ. But what's the purpose? It didn't say to transport you to heaven when you die. It didn't say to bless you and protect you and cover you and make sure everything is good to go in your life. It said the purpose of what He did was so that Jesus could take you, a wretched sinner that is hostile towards God in everything that you do and present you to God as holy, blameless, and righteous. That's the purpose of Jesus coming. That you would be before God as holy, blameless, and righteous. Nobody told me that when I was growing up. Nobody told me that, that I was literally a sinner but that I also had value. I knew I was a sinner, but hey, John 3.16, God so loved the world. We blaze over that. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. You know the verse. That first part is massive, and we don't even understand what it means. For God so loved. What does that mean to love someone like us? Colossians 1.21 says it. We, we weren't just bad people. We weren't just like kind of sinners we were hostile towards God the way we were born everything about our nature the way we think, the way we act, the way we respond to life, our urges, our cravings are hostile towards God and it actually makes us enemies of His you know when I was in Afghanistan we engaged hostile enemies now, that was a war, so I'm sure you can picture what engaging an enemy looks like in a war. It doesn't turn out very well for the enemy. And the Bible says that we were that enemy to God, but Romans 5.8 says that while we were in that place of sin and hating God with everything within us, that He demonstrated His love by sending Christ for us. Now, why am I talking about all of this? It's like, don't we know this already? I don't think that we do. Because somewhere along the way, we've forgotten why Jesus came and we've made life all about us. Because Colossians 1 doesn't just say you're holy, righteous, and blameless before God. It says, if indeed you continue in the faith. Why does it say that? Because so many people make life about themselves and they get caught up in living for today and living for tomorrow not living for heaven not living for God we get caught up in living for ourselves and when we do that we lay down our faith and when you don't have faith you don't see yourself as holy, righteous and blameless because you begin to see yourself for how you're living or how you're not living and I can't tell you how many Christians or people that call themselves that at least are living at a level that's far below what Christ paid for. And that's where I was living for 25 years. 
I would have told you I was a Christian. I liked the idea of it. I served God on the weekends and some weekdays. But I was far from God in my heart and in my actions. I did not see myself as holy and righteous. I did not see myself as blameless. I did not see myself as loved by God. I saw myself as a sinner who had a Savior and I was going to do the best I could until that day. And when I see myself as a sinner, I begin to live as a sinner. When I see myself as unworthy, I begin to live as unworthy. And we have many people today that are living this way. Hey guys, thanks for coming. Yeah. We have so many people today that do not see themselves in the identity that Christ paid for. And as a result, they're living in a wrong identity. That was me. But you see, I thought it was normal. I thought it was normal to call myself a Christian, play drums at a worship conference, impact thousands of people, and then go out the same weekend and get drunk with my friends and sleep around. I thought it was normal. Why? Because a lot of us did it. But you see, I was a good Christian. All of my friends were also Christian. Don't worry. I didn't have any close friends that were unbelievers. I didn't want to associate with people like that. I was a Christian. I made sure all my friends were Christians too. But what happened over the years was I seemed to have surrounded myself with people that did exactly what I did. Went to church every Sunday, professed Jesus as Lord, saying that it was all about Him, felt the tingles, cried sometimes. Monday through Saturday, watching what the world watches, listening to music the world listens to, doing everything the world does, talking like the world, sounding like the world, looking like the world in every single way. But hey, I'm a Christian. I have prayed the prayer to go to heaven. Don't judge me. My eternity is secure. I'm working it out with God. And when I was in Afghanistan getting bombed every day for six months, over 155 attacks on our camp from rockets and mortars in six months. And when that was happening, and I thought that I was going to die, or when I was out on a mission and a rocket attack barely missed my truck, and I thought I was going to die, I thought, well, at least I'm a Christian and I'll go to heaven and I could try to get some sleep tonight because I have hope. Let me tell you what, when I got born again two years later, God said, you remember that night? Do you think you would have gone to heaven? He didn't ask it in a mean way. He was just inquiring of me. And I said, no, I would not have gone to heaven. Why? Because I had actually been born again. And I knew what it meant. I knew about the power of the transformation of Jesus Christ. I knew that my life had been forever changed. And when my life got changed, I realized that everything before that had not been changed. When my life was finally for Christ, I realized that everything before that was not unto God, it was unto self, with Jesus incorporated. I realized in a moment that for 25 years I called myself a Christian, but I would not have, be, I would have not gone to heaven. I professed God with my mouth, but my heart was far from Him. And if I had reached the gates of heaven, He would have said, depart from me, I don't even know who you are. And I would have said, Lord, I've been in your church, I've been a part of your body for 25 years. Lord, I've drummed and played guitar at so many services and so many conferences. We've seen so many people brought to Christ. Lord, I've prayed, I've prayed for my family members. I've talk to some people about you sometimes. I haven't denied you with my mouth, God. You know what he would have said? Your heart was far from me. I do not know who you are. And it destroys me inside to think that there's probably hundreds of millions of people that call themselves Christians that might go to hell one day because they're living the same life that I was living. In absolute deception. How do I know I was not a child of God? Because the Bible says that God is a good father. Let me ask you this. Does a good father discipline their kids? 
Yeah. Yeah, he does. Does a good father let their child go do whatever they want with no repercussions at all? No. <laughs> I'm not going to yell over a plane. No, a good father doesn't do that. A good father corrects their kids. If you ever tried to sneak out, a good father, if he found out, he'd be there waiting for you so that he could discipline you and correct you. You see, a good father doesn't let their kid do anything they want. And so the Bible says that if you can live any way you want to, if you can live in the world, if you can sin and have no repercussions whatsoever, no conviction, no correction from God, then He is not your Father. If you can do whatever you want, if you can live in the world, if you can sound like the world, if you can talk like the world, if you can do exactly what the world does, and you call God your Father, what kind of father are you making God out to be? Because the Bible says that if that's the case, you're calling God an illegitimate father. And that's not who He is. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. What does that mean? That means that what God says is the truth. So if God says he's a good father and he disciplines his kids, you better believe that that's true. That means that there ain't no kid that belongs to God that ain't getting disciplined. For 25 years, I lived however I wanted to. Playing drums for God, drinking for myself and sleeping around. No conviction whatsoever not being fathered by God, not a Christian. You're not a Christian just because you go to church and you claim to be one. A Christian belongs to God. Now we're here for revival. Why am I talking about what it means to be a Christian? Because what if you're actually not? What if you need to be a Christian so that you can bring revival? You first must be revived. I was down for revival. I played drums at so many meetings just believing for a move of God when you know what? I needed a move of God in my own heart. And I was so blind to it until someone came up to me one day and said, you are not an awesome guy. You think you're a cool Christian, this drummer, this paratrooper, army guy jumping out of planes? You're a horrible person. And you're not a Christian. You're a hypocrite. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> Go on, you know. And they began to share with me the real gospel like I'm sharing with you right now. They began to tell me about a God that loves and that does not want to leave me in the place I was in because you know the place I was in? Partying, drinking, buying all kinds of stuff, had a ton of money, five-bedroom house as a 24-year-old, Mustang GT, straight pipe, super nice, motorcycle, had a dog. I thought I had it all. Why is it then some nights I wanted to kill myself when I was going to sleep? Maybe there's more to life than what you can buy with money, what you can accomplish in your life, and what kind of friends you can have. Maybe there's a peace that doesn't make sense, that you can't earn, that you can't accomplish, that you can't pay for. Maybe there's a joy that's not attainable by any other way than the one who brings joy, and that's Jesus Christ. And I found that out. Because I went through trauma. I went through death after death after death. Death in the military. Death overseas. Death from suicide. Death of my best friend who made it home from Afghanistan in one of the most dangerous parts of the country we were in. And then he dies in a car wreck in freaking New Jersey. Yeah, when that happens, really, life starts to set in a little bit harder. And all of those previous traumas start to stack up. And all of a sudden, the partying that you did to cope with your feelings isn't enough. And now I have to drink just to go to bed at night. And then I have all these questions about how can I be serving God, but he's nowhere around me. Why didn't you save my friend? I couldn't answer that question. And now I'm wondering if he even hears my prayers. And now I'm wondering if my life even matters. And it'd probably be better if I was just out of here. But hey, I would have told you I was a Christian. At least I'm going to go to heaven. I 
thought the way I was living, I was in danger of losing blessing in heaven. I need to tell you tonight that if you're living that way, the way that I was living, you're not in danger of losing heavenly blessings. You're in danger of eternal torment. You're in danger of being cut off from God and Him saying, I don't know who you are. And I don't want that to happen to anyone. I want to make sure we understand why we're alive. Why we're Christians. Or why you should be. Let me tell you why. It's much more than you're a sinner and you need to be saved. It's the value in your life. It's the potential that's in your life. It's the purpose of your life and it's why Jesus came. Jesus did not come to earth to pursue the cross for a bunch of wretched sinners that had no purpose other than for Him to zap them up to heaven one day. The Bible doesn't say He became sin who knew no sin that we might pray a prayer and be zapped up to heaven upon death. That's not in my Bible. It says He became sin who knew no sin that you might become the righteousness of God. The purpose of your life To become the very righteousness of God Himself. That's what Jesus paid for. And the Bible says that Jesus pursued the cross. How many people do you know that run after death? I can't name any. I know brave men and women that run towards bullets. I've done that. But I wasn't running to die. I was running to help people live. Jesus pursued death. And not just death, he became obedient because of his humility. And he died on the cross. He was tortured. The Bible says that he was unrecognizable. How many of you have seen The Passion of the Christ? Or any movie about Jesus being crucified? When when Jesus was hanging on the cross in those movies, could you tell it was Jesus? You knew that's Jesus on the cross. Not just because that's Jesus. You could see that that was the actor that they had chosen to play the role of Jesus Christ. Even in The Passion, one of the most gory movies I've ever seen. I could tell that was Jim Caviezel on the cross. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was unrecognizable. That means when you looked at Him, you would go, Who is that? Who is that hanging up there? I can't tell who that is. Why was he beaten so badly? Because when sin got done with us, we looked nothing like we were created to look. And Jesus came to redeem that which was lost. What was lost? Your identity was lost. Because your identity is in God. And you and I were separated from God in the Garden of Eden. We were cut off from God because of disobedience and sin. Jesus came and He said, I am going to restore what was lost. I'm going to bring my people back into relationship with God so that they can know who they are and why they're alive. Jesus died to present you before God as holy, blameless, and righteous. When you come unto Him, He takes the old you and it's crucified with Him. And it says that a new person is resurrected in that place. If anyone comes unto Christ, they are a brand new creation. Somebody here needs to be made brand new. Because the old you is the one that's living. You like the idea of the new. You like the idea of Christianity. But you have not been transformed. And you need to be made brand new. Because to enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again. And I tell you that the kingdom of God is not a place far off. It's not heaven. Christ died so that heaven could come back inside of you. So that the kingdom of God could be in you. The fullness of God you were meant to carry. Jesus even went as far as to say, when you go from town to town, go preaching, saying, the kingdom of God has come upon you. The kingdom of God is near you. Why? Because the enemy has set up a kingdom of darkness. Would you guys agree that the devil is at work in our world right now? It's pretty twisted. It's pretty ugly out there. He has a kingdom. And Jesus said, when you go from place to place, 
you let the devil and everyone know that the kingdom of God is here now. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, man, you guys need to get into that chapter. Philippians 2 shows us why we're alive. It says that we need to be found without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the darkness holding fast to the word of life. We hold fast to this book. We hold fast to the teachings of God. We do all things without complaining and disputing. Why? Because life's not about us anymore. My life was about me for 25 years until I got born again. And all of a sudden it was all about him. And I was waking up instead of praying, God, help everything to go my way. God, help me to get this, help that, touch this person so that my life gets better. My prayers changed. And I said, God, what would you have with me today? How do you want to use me today, God? Speak to me and speak through me today, God. My life is not my own. I don't exist for everyone around me. I exist for you. And I know that you're going to use me to impact everyone around me. I don't care what the world says about me, God. Your word says something else. You've already spoken about my worth when you sent your son. That's how I began to pray, guys. Barely born again, barely understanding the gospel. But Christ had put his heart and his love inside of me and something changed. And all of a sudden, I cared about those around me. And I stopped caring about myself. And all of a sudden, I began to see darkness around me flee as the light entered the room. You know, I just checked into my hotel room. And when I flipped the light on, there was no epic struggle between the darkness and the light. When I flipped that light switch, the light came right on like that and all the darkness went out. That's what happens when Christ comes inside of you. The darkness you are living in, the separation you are living in, flees like that and the light of the world comes inside of you. To remain. If indeed you hold on to the word of life that you've been given, if indeed you continue in the faith, you too will walk into the darkness and light will drive it out. You see, this life is about so much more than getting to heaven. This is about becoming like Jesus. Walking the life that He walked. So that we could see heaven come back to earth. You want to see revival? It can start with you. It can start now. It starts by knowing why you're alive. Because the devil is after all of our faith. The devil is out to give you evidence. To give you facts. To give you worldly truth about why God's not real, you're crazy, you shouldn't believe this, stop praying that. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things that you hope for. Faith looks evidence in the face and says, I believe in God more than what I see right now. I believe in God more than I hear right now. I believe in God more than what I feel right now. That's what faith says. And the enemy is always coming after you to get you to take off your spiritual armor so that you'll live for yourself again. You'll look inward. You'll say, what do I need? How can I th survive? This life ain't about surviving, guys. It's about thriving. It's about waking up to give the devil a bad day every day. Waking up on a mission. Waking up with the sword of the Spirit, ready to shed some devil blood. Going to bed at night with the bloody sword next to your bed. Smiling. Because you know you're going to wake up in the morning and do it again. Because the devil's been cutting you guys up for far too long. But the Bible says that the shield of faith is going to protect us from all of the fiery darts and the accusations of the enemy. We must use the shield... We must use the Word of God to defeat the lies of the enemy because I know the enemy's been lying to you. 
He's been speaking to you. He's been tempting you. He's been telling you you're worthless. He's been telling you that you're crazy. He's been telling you that you shouldn't keep your convictions because they're stupid. That you should just give in and be like the rest of the world. And the Word of God says, don't believe that lie for a second. Why? Because Christ has overcome the world. He says, in this world you're going to have troubles. But take heart, I've overcome the world. Our Christianity can't be about, is my life going well or not? That means God loves me or He doesn't. It's waking up and saying, God, I know you love me and it doesn't matter what comes my way. You've overcome the world and that means I've overcome the world because you're in me. And today I'm going to go out this front door and I'm going to shine for you no matter what happens. That's where you show the world that God is real. What kind of testimony is it if a believer and an unbeliever walk through the exact same fire and respond exactly the same. They're freaking out, they're fearing, they're worrying, they're asking all their friends, they're trying to find a book. There's no testimony in that. What if an unbeliever and a believer walk through the same fire, this one comes out pretty beat up, and the believer walks out the other side and you can't even tell that they've been through one. That'll mess with a lot of people. When I was almost murdered at work last year as a police officer, no one knew outside of my close friend group. Now either I'm the biggest play actor phony that's ever existed and I put on a good face and I pretended to be okay, or God's really real and I had peace in my heart and a joy that no one could take. And weeks later, when I finally told people what happened, they were like, what? You almost died? Someone murdered you? Oh my gosh. Wow, are you okay? And I'm like, ah, great. Oh man, you know, people were saying crazy stuff. Screw that guy. I hope he goes to hell. Da 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 da. I said, no. What's wrong in your heart that you would say something like that? Forgive that guy. I pray that he finds the Lord. It's possible to deny yourself and live for God. But you can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it born of the flesh. You must be born again and you must be walking in the Spirit of God. If we want to see a revival come in our lives, if we want to see a revival come in this city, we must be burning for God. Because if you leave here on fire for God, you are going to set things on fire around you. You can't hang out around fire for too long and get too close and not feel the heat. You get a little closer, you're going to get burned. Something's going to catch. That should be you in every environment that you're in. You are catching. You're creating sparks all over the place. In your school, in your home, in your family, in your job, in your church. Your church might need to be revived. This is why you were born. Jesus came to defeat the works of the devil. Guess what your purpose and calling is? Not to go to heaven and have a fun time until you get there. Your calling is to defeat the works of the devil every day of your life. And to bum the devil out every day. To make the devil wish that he never touched you. Because when he touches you, all it does is make you run to Christ and become more like him. Now, if the devil's goal is to get you to get away from Christ, and every time he touches you, you get closer to him, how many times do you think he's going to touch you? If every time the devil comes to touch you, you run to God, do you think he's happy about that? Because the devil's banking on the fact that you're going to shrivel up, cry, and ask a few friends for prayer out of a place of fear and worry. When the devil touches you and you go, Father, I thank you so much. It does not matter what is happening to me right now. It doesn't matter what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing. That doesn't change who you are, who Jesus is, or what, he, what it means now that he's come. God, I thank you right now that I'm being perfected in your love. I'm being strengthened, Father. I thank you in the name of Jesus, God, that you are strong in my weakness. 
What if that happened every time the devil touched you? Huh? He's going to be pretty upset. It's possible to live this way, guys. It's possible to burn like this for the Lord every day. And I'm telling you right now, you can't talk the way that I'm talking for almost six years and not go through some stuff. Some of you guys wouldn't believe the stuff that my wife and I have walked through. But you can't tell when you look at me. You can't tell when you talk to me. You're not going to find a crying post on my Instagram. Because I have peace in my heart. Because I've made right, been made right with the Holy God when I deserved hell. And He did it because He loved me. And He didn't just leave me and say, Hey, here's your ticket to heaven. I'll see you in 80, 90, 100 years. He said, Son, welcome into the family. Here's my spirit. Here's all authority that I gave my son Jesus. I give it to you. And I'm telling you, go therefore. Just as I sent Jesus, I'm sending you. Do all of the works he did. And even greater works you're going to do. Because he has come to be with me. And now you're filled with my spirit. Come on guys, that is so powerful. We've been commissioned by God. But are we living it out? Or are we forsaking that at the cost of our flesh? A little party, a little drink, a little movie, a little whatever. The Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. Those are Jesus' words in red letters. You can't love Him out of your flesh you can't love Him just because you want to. You have to be made new and given a brand new heart that has a capacity to love God. You need your heart of stone made a heart of flesh. And then you're not going to try to love God. You're going to love God and you're going to try to stay away from the world. You're not going to be in the world and try to be religious. So it's time to get made new. It's time to get filled with His Spirit so that we can leave this place on fire for Him, ready to crush the devil. Show the world that He's real no matter what we're walking through. I'm going to finish with this. I have a good friend. He was a mentor of mine growing up. He was an army ranger. He won the best ranger competition. That's a pretty serious competition. Dude is a total stud. So many tours overseas, it's ridiculous. Desert Storm, all of it. Missionary in Haiti now was, till he just got shot during a, an attempted kidnapping, paralyzed from the waist down. He's in a hospital now in America, can't move. You know what he said? I'm still alive, brother. They can take my limbs. <laughs> but they can't take my mouth. And if they take my mouth, then I'll, I'll just grunt. I'll groan. I'll glorify God with everything in me. I'll never stop. This guy was shot and paralyzed, serving the Lord. Some people would be thrown into a frenzy and say, God, where are you? I thought I was serving you. How could you let this happen? Every nurse that comes into that room feels the presence of Almighty God and says, what is different about you? How are you smiling? What is happening to you? That's God. That man knows why he's alive. And you can too. You can burn like that every day. Where we don't fear the devil, we fear God. And where we're not worried about death because we're not without hope. Because the Bible says if you're in Christ, you're never going to die. One day you're going to close your eyes and you're going to open them and you're going to be with the Lord. What is to be afraid of? So I have to ask you tonight and online, if there's anyone here that does not know God, you've never given Him your whole life. Or if there's anyone here who would have said they were a Christian until they got here and now you're not so sure. And you need to give your life to Christ for real. I need you to come forward right now and online comment, Yes, Jesus. If that's anyone here, you need to come up to the front right now so we can pray for you. Do not deny God before man or He will deny you before the Father.
That's what the Bible says. If there is anyone here that needs to dedicate their life to Christ, I'm going to give you a minute to come up. God is calling you, you need to respond to that. I'm not pressuring. I don't need someone to come up. I'm here for you. If there is any part of your heart that thinks I might need to go up there and you suppress that, the Bible says you can do that so many times, you harden yourself to God and you'll never be able to say yes again one day. It's called being impossible to renew to repentance. Where you say, ah, oh, it's not for me. I think I'm saved. Oh, I'll say yes later. If there is 1% of your heart that feels like you should be up here, then you need to come up here because that's God. Wow, man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow, come on, guys. Let's give it up for these friends. Thank you, Jesus. guys lives are being changed right now you guys are not who you were when you showed up the bible says you're a brand new creation whoever you were before this is dead and you have been raised to life with christ and that now when god looks at you you are holy all the time you are righteous you are blameless in the sight of god He's not mad at you anymore. He's madly in love with you. And He's going to correct you and He's going to father you and He's going to make you look like Jesus as you yield to Him. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so thankful to Jesus right now. Yes. Okay. Now, these friends online. Man, we had a bunch of people say yes to Jesus online. This is awesome. We're going to pray for any needs. So anyone who has a physical need, you need healing in your body, if you feel like you're oppressed, if you feel like you just need freedom, whatever it is, we're going to have you come up front and we're just going to pray for you, okay? Now we're going to pray for this brother right here. I'm going to come to you. Is that cool? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Man, so... 
motorcycle accident. So you have, can you move your left side? Okay, so you have feeling in it, but you can't move it. Starting to, but not yet. Okay. Just there. Okay. And then the right side, nothing. Just your, you said your foot? Yeah. Okay. Man, this is great right now. God, I thank you so much for this brother. I thank you that you love him, Lord. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that every single issue that came from this motorcycle accident would be healed in Jesus' name. I speak to your spine right now. And I say, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to every vertebrae that was damaged and I say, be healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. I command feeling into both of your legs for the glory of God right now. In Jesus' name. I command movement in your legs. Strengthen these legs in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for restoring everything that was taken away through this accident and making him brand new. In Jesus' name. Amen. What's going on, man? I saw you were kind of switching a little bit. Ah, uh, spasm. Spasm? Did that happen? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. So besides that, was it were you was anything happening while we were praying? Uh, just a lot emotionally. And, uh, yeah. Now you can feel the love of God. Yeah. yeah. How about in your body? Can you feel any difference? Is there any way to tell? Not too. Much. It's just kind of I can feel it. Just yeah. Is there still zero feeling in this leg? Okay. And is there any improvement in this one? Anything noticeable? Okay, wait a minute. So, have you had that kind of movement? It comes and goes sometimes. Okay, but that movement in your leg, is that new or is that the same? You, you, you're doing a little something. Everything's kind of new sometimes. Yeah? Yeah, Okay. it's, it's just a, still the three months more. Yeah. Well, can we pray again? Amen. Yeah, come on, man. Come on, man. Well, Lord, I thank you so much. I thank you, God, that this man is going to walk again. I command your body to be healed for the glory of God right now. In Jesus' name. I speak to this paralysis. I curse you, paralysis, right now. In Jesus' name. And I command you to get out of this man right now. Every bit of paralysis, every bit of numbness, get out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for your glory and by your power that you would quicken his body, strengthen his legs, Lord. I ask you to touch him now in Jesus' mighty name. We don't care about a three-month mark. We don't care what any doctors have said. We trust in you, God. And I ask you, Lord, heal this leg. Leg will be healed right now in Jesus' name. I command function into this leg, and I curse every limitation command feeling into this leg right now in Jesus name I command strength into this leg in the mighty name of Jesus Christ mobility every limitation gone in Jesus name Is there any way to tell now, tell, tell the difference? I hope it's not like too tiring to test it out or whatever, but I want to see what's, uh, if anything's changed for you. Not yet. I've kind of already been too exhausted. Okay. So you, you, still, definitely... you still don't feel anything in that left or that right leg? It, 
does feel a little different. It feels. I don't need you. I, I'm not here to have my feelings. No, it's kind of numb. It's all good. Different way. Okay, has it ever been like that before? Only on very rare occasions. Okay. And then the the left leg is it? Any change in that? No, not yet. Okay. Sometimes they take time, and sometimes I've uh, got you know need to do in a longer time. Yeah, I want to see this thing go right now. <laughs> Can I pray one more time? Yes. Now we're gonna pray again. Come on. God, thank you, Lord. We believe you're doing something. We believe you're at work right now, God. I thank you. Your word doesn't return void. Lord, I speak to this right leg. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what we see. I know who you are, God. I command this leg to be healed for the glory of God. Paralysis, you get out in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the spine right now being made brand new. Every disc, every vertebrae, absolute healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Every vertebrae strengthened and quickened and made new in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. Revive this leg. I speak life over this leg right now. I speak life over both legs in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command feeling into this leg in Jesus' name. Amen. sensation at all on your leg like if you when you were feeling it is it numb everywhere or has anything changed it hasn't changed okay not the feeling and the left one same story I'm not trying to tire you out yeah <laughs> the feeling is I have pretty good feeling in the left one. Yeah, I mean, anything since we've prayed, anything changing in that? No, not yet. Man, I'm not okay with that. Sometimes I think uh, God maybe has just something else planned for me. Maybe I just have to reach a couple more people the way I am in the wheelchair. And... Oh, I'll walk again in that. God, God, you'll walk again. God for sure. Yeah, I know you will. Let me just pray for you, man. God, thank you for this man. I thank you for his faith in you, Lord. Thank you that he is going to be a man of unwavering faith. And Lord, I don't care what we see right now. We know that this man is going to walk. I believe, God, that you will heal his body. I believe, God, for full restoration in both of his limbs. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that he is a testament even now that he will be a further testament of your goodness. I thank you, God, for healing not only his body, but his heart and his mind. Thank you that you're going to use him as a pure, mighty man of God. So I bless him right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, man. <laughs> That's a lot of twitching. How much does it normally twitch in a day? Uh, not that much. Not that much? No, not at all. Man, I am not discouraged. I know that something is happening. I, I agree. I, I think that there's definitely something happening. Yeah. Because it's all over the place right now. Yeah, I can tell. Every time we start praying, it's wigging out. Yeah. Man, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Guys, I'm not here to make myself feel good. I'm here to believe that God's going to heal people. And no, we didn't see this man fully healed. Something was happening. Every time we prayed, that leg was twitching like crazy. He said it never happens like that. I'm so thankful. I know that God is on the way. And this man's going to walk again. I'm 
thankful for you, bro. I'm thankful for your faith. Thanks for letting me pray so many times. Listen, if there's anybody else that needs to be prayed for, you can come up right now. We're just going to go after God and believe for Him to touch you. Thank you that you have brought her out of witchcraft. And right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every bit of witchcraft that's come against her family to leave in Jesus' name. Every spirit that's come in through witchcraft, I bind you and I command you to get out of this woman right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for setting her absolutely free in Jesus' name. You be free in Jesus' mighty name. I command every evil spirit out of this woman right now, in Jesus' name. Every tormenting spirit, get out right now, in Jesus' mighty name. You be free right now, in Jesus' name. Every tormenting spirit, get out of this woman, in Jesus' name. Come out right now. Every last one of you out. Every spirit that's come in through witchcraft, in Jesus' name, we break your power. Come out now. I thank you, God. She has come out of agreement with witchcraft. And so I command you to go in Jesus' name. Every one of you out right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, thank you for coming and burning out every evil spirit right now. Let me help you up. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lord, fill her Holy Spirit. Fill her Holy Spirit. <laughs> and she, what's going? What's going on right now? It's just tingling all over. You're tingling. Yeah. Let me just pray for you before you go sit down, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I thank you for just coming right now and filling your daughter. Fill her right now, God. Every area that was occupied by witchcraft, I ask you, Lord, to come and just flood in, rush in with your love, God with your healing. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that the devil has no hold on her anymore. She is a child of God. She's been bought by the blood. And I pray right now that the fire of the Holy Spirit would come upon you and that you would burn for him and know that you are loved by him. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> come on, guys. Jesus. Amazing. That was amazing. Okay, anybody else need prayer? Hey, what's up, man? Nice to meet you, buddy. Shane, Hi. nice to meet you, too. Uh, Shane, you. nice to meet you guys. How can we pray for you? Yeah, so the world wants us to you know, be constantly lusting for the desires of the world. And it would be really awesome to pray for this fight and lust and value and lust and end to it. Yeah. This change of mind, change of desire to the mind. Amen. I just got to say that things are working through. Uh, yeah. Lust that came back into my life. And I, I'd love to be straight over. I'd love to be straight over. Yeah. Totally. So same thing for both you guys? Yeah. Okay. Let me just adjust this really quick so we're all in here. Okay. God, I thank you so much for these men. I thank you, Lord, that you live in these men, that they love you. And I thank you, Lord, for their humble hearts coming forward for prayer because they know that you're the answer to break off every bit of this issue. I thank you that they have come out of agreement with lust. They don't want anything to do with it. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of lust off of these men. In Jesus' mighty name. 
I thank you, God, in Jesus' name, that lust would flee in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command you to be free right now. I break every lie off of you right now. I break every assignment of the enemy off of your life that you would be stuck in lust and not fulfill your calling. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming and setting both of these men absolutely free. Come, Holy Spirit. Burn in these men, Holy Spirit. Set them on fire, Holy Spirit. Fill them, God. Show them that you're not mad at them, God, that you want to use them, that you love them. I pray that these men would burn for you all the days of their life and lust would have no place in their heart. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Okay. What's going on, man? What are you, what are you feeling? I know Holy God is here at something. Is the Holy Spirit just taking you over? Yeah. Yeah. I, I really felt like that thing just left you. Yeah. Dude, come thank on. You. Praise God. Praise God, for sure. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jesus. Wow, dude. Yes. <laughs> come on. Praise God. All right. There's nobody else. Yeah? All right, come on, man. I've, uh, I've heard of just new sexual version of lust, and I've given the enemy is such a strong word in my life. Um, I can't tell you the number of times I've just turned my back on what I know I should do. Yeah. And I have not, I just, I pray for the students of the Lord and I'm just, I need to get this, this, this years of coming out so you can just set this right Man, I'm so excited. You're you're brand new, man. You're not who you were coming in. And we're gonna pray this thing's gonna break off of you. And I also want to encourage you too, man. If you if you haven't or you don't, you should fast. Yeah. If you can, mm-hmm. you should do a fast, bro, like an intense one. And I'm telling you, most people, three, four day fast, no food, just water, they break a lot of stuff off. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I just feel like led to share that with you before we pray that sometimes there's things we need to cast off and break and sometimes it's the flesh and we need to crucify it and we need to beat the flesh down and show it who's boss and then fast to do that quickly yeah mm-hmm. okay and let's just pray god thank you thank you for my brother thank you lord that he is a brand new creation today he surrendered his life to you and i thank you god in the mighty name of jesus that every bit of lust, every spirit of lust over him would be broken right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that every demon in hell has to leave right now in Jesus' name. Every demon of lust, every tormenting spirit, I cast you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and burn lust out of this man. Burn it out of his heart. Burn it out of his mind, God. I pray that you erase the tapes of his mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I command you to be free of sexual addiction right now in Jesus' name. I command you to be free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every tormenting spirit, get out of this man right now. Every evil spirit, get out of this man right now. Every spirit of addiction, every generational curse, I break you and I command you out of this man right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. You can't hide in him any longer. You can't hold him any longer. I command you, spirit of lust, every spirit of perversion, you get out of this man in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, overwhelm every demonic presence right now. Overwhelm him, God. Overwhelm him, God. Overwhelm him, God. A new heart, God. Heart of flesh, Lord, that cares about the things of God. Heart of flesh that would never turn towards perversion or pornography or sex. I thank you, devil. Your day is done in this man. Your day is done in this man. Loose your grip from this man right now in Jesus' name. Loose your grip from this man in Jesus' name. I overwhelm you, devil, in Jesus' mighty name. This man is free. You are free by the blood of Jesus Christ. In every evil spirit, right now, go in Jesus' name. Go now in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and fill him. Fill him, Holy Spirit, with your love. Fill him with truth, God. Fill him with love right now. Lord, show him how much you love him. 
right now in Jesus name Lord I ask Holy Spirit that you take the place of every evil thing that's right bro just let it out let it go every evil thing you come out right now Holy Spirit come and take your place you're setting him free God you be free in Jesus name you be free in Jesus name freedom is here freedom is here devil you can't hold him anymore you can't have him anymore he belongs to God he doesn't want you anymore say I renounce sexual immorality I renounce sexual immorality I renounce perversion I renounce perversion and I renounce lust I renounce lust say I love integrity I love integrity I love purity I love purity I'm a righteous man I'm a righteous man in Jesus name in Jesus name that's right so God I thank you He's declared an enemy. You have no hold on him anymore. You have no rights. This man is free by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you fill him right now. Fill him right now to overflow, God. Fill him with your fire in Jesus' name. Overwhelm him with your power in Jesus' name. He is a new man. In Jesus' name. Amen. What's never, going on, bro? I've never experienced anything like that in my life. 25 years in the church. What was happening, dude? Just, I felt it throughout my entire body. Weakness in my legs. I lost my sense of breath. And I could just feel this. It felt like my body was lowing. I swear. 25 years yeah. in the church. And I've never experienced anything like that. That's how I was, bro. It's really real. He really set you free just now. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's the presence of God. <laughs> Come here, dude. Come on, guys. That is amazing. Thank you, Jesus. What? Oh, my gosh. That was so good. Is there anybody else that could use prayer? Prayer in your body. Prayer for your soul. Prayer for your mind. We're praying for all of it. Come forward. We'll pray for you. Yeah. Are you okay if I move this? Okay. Okay. Intrusive thoughts? Okay. Okay. You try to spend time with him, don't you? I feel like you really do sit down with your Bible. Yeah. When no one else is looking, like... I feel like you really do love the Lord. Yeah. I can just sense that. I can see that on you. Like, I can tell. Like, God's showing me, like, He knows you. Like, He loves you. Yeah. That's right. God, I thank you. Every lie against her is broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every bit of insecurity, every lie from the enemy, every accusation, I break you off in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, right now that you see this girl and you love her heart. You know her heart is for you. Spirit of religion, get off of this girl in the name of Jesus Christ right now. I break your power. Every religious spirit that would come against you and tell you that you're not doing enough for God, I break that off in Jesus' name. God says, you're enough for me because I live inside of you and I've made you a brand new creation. I know you. I see you when you rise, when you wake up, and when you go to bed. I know a word before it's on the tip of your tongue. Every hair on your head, I have numbered it. I know everything about you. God, I thank you for that truth over this girl right now. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would fill her with a peace that she has not known in a long time. I silence every voice of the enemy, every intrusive thought right now. I break you off in Jesus' name. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill this girl in the name of Jesus. Fill her right now in Jesus' name. You be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Spirit of God in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Minister to your daughter. Minister to your daughter. Come on, guys. Be setting her free right now. Setting her free. Thank you, Jesus. 
anything to Lord God. This is the gospel. He'll never leave you where you're at. He'll never leave you where you're at. He loves you too much. Okay, okay. come over here really quick. Um, what, what was happening while we were praying? I thought you were okay at first. you haven't felt like he's been there with you right so he came over you and said i'm here with you and then what happened like why did you fall down you felt like someone pushed you that's crazy yeah i wasn't touching you at all that's amazing how do you feel now that like after we prayed oh praise god Come on, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. She said she feels free. Come on. That's amazing. All right, guys, if there's anyone else who needs prayer, please come up. Woo! <laughs> Getting windy. Okay, let's try that. closer so that we can hear. Is that okay? Okay. Man. Remind me your name one more time. Shelby. Shelby. I could just tell like the presence of God was all over you. You're so sensitive to His Spirit. And what I actually feel like is that you have a gift of discernment. And you can discern spirits. Different spirits. And you can tell. I feel like God's going to use that in you for His glory. But right now you're hearing a lie and you're not it is overwhelming we're going to pray to break that off but god's actually going to use that for you to know what's going on around you i feel like you've always been pretty sensitive to the spirit is that true yeah, yeah I, I don't know you but i just feel like god's speaking to me that you've just had this knowing about spiritual stuff even before like you came to know the lord yeah this girl so much you know exactly where she's at God you know the cries of her heart you know that your word says you bottle up every tear that we shed you've seen every tear that she has shed you've heard every word of her prayers on her bed Lord not one of them bounced off the ceiling they all made it to your ear and right now in the name of Jesus I come into agreement with her and I break off Every lie against her in the mighty name of Jesus. Every accusing spirit in Jesus' name. Every voice coming from the enemy. I bind you and I cast you out of this girl right now in Jesus' name. I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming and filling this girl right now. Fill her in Jesus' mighty name, God. Fill her, Holy Spirit, from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet right now with your power and with your fire, God. Burn out every lie that's come against her. Break off every bit of depression. Depression, I curse you in Jesus' name. Suicide, every spirit of suicide, I break you off of this girl in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command you to leave right now. This girl is free in the name of Jesus Christ. 
she is free by the blood of Jesus Christ. And devil, I overwhelm you right now with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I command every evil, tormenting spirit coming against her to leave now in Jesus' mighty name. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Free, every bit of anxiety, go. Every bit of doubt, leave in Jesus' name. Every bit of insecurity, I break you off in Jesus' name. You are enough in God. You are qualified because He says you're qualified. You are holy and righteous and blameless. And your life is worth living. I cancel every spirit, every assignment of death over your life. You are going to live a long life. And you are going to burn for the Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you just touched this girl right now. In Jesus' name. I say be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with peace right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. What's, what's going on? I saw a lot of stuff. Yeah. You felt like you were getting numb? Yeah. Just got calm all over. Praise God. That stuff is gone. Yeah, you're amazing. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. She said she just felt it calm. You're good? All right, awesome. You need prayer, sir? Do you need prayer? Hearing open right now in Jesus' name. Okay, let's, uh, let's form a circle down here. We'll pray for the city, and that'll be that. Man, this was awesome. Thank you, Lord God. Uh, our other family had to bounce. I guess their little girl had a, had enough. So it'll just be us. Man, let's pray. You guys comfortable holding hands? Alright. Man, wasn't this awesome? God's doing something in our hearts. Above everything else, man. I just want us to not just have had a good night. I want us to leave here with us. I want us to leave here on fire. Knowing why we're alive. Oh, here they come. Let's get them in. You guys down to join the circle? Okay. It's okay. Okay, this is a kind of tight show. We were just saying, wasn't this awesome? These guys have so much in our hearts. And we, we want to take what we forward. We don't just want this to be a fun night to remember. So I'm just going to pray and I'm going to believe that what we've heard and seen is going to get installed and deep into our hearts and our minds. Yeah? Come on. God, thank you. Thank you for everything you did tonight. Thank you, God, above any healing, above any, rev any, any freedom from oppression, God, I thank you for a revelation. I thank you for a new understanding, a perspective that we've never had before, of why we're alive, that no one can take away. I thank you, God, for a revelation that no demon in hell can come against, that no matter what comes our way, we can still burn for you. 
you've given us full authority and permission and a thumbs up to do so. God, I pray that as we leave this place, every person here would begin a revival in their homes, in their workplaces, at the grocery store, everywhere they go, they would burn for you. I thank you, Father, that you're healing our bodies. I thank you for my brother, and I believe God is going to walk again. I thank you, Lord, for every person that you touch is set free from depression and anxiety, from addiction. Thank you, God, that you set our hearts on fire for you because you're a good Father. And we declare together that we are going to burn for you. Revival is going to start in Indianapolis and in this state. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for coming out. Amen. Woo! Let me turn this off really quick. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was amazing. Okay, guys. We have to go. We'll be in Detroit tomorrow. I'll post this on YouTube tonight, and we'll post some videos from it later. Thanks, guys, for being here. Amazing.